Hallelujah. He is an amazing God. Thank you. Let me just give a shout out again to musicians. Thank you, Chris and Man Man and, and Brian. You guys have been so, so, so faithful during these seasons to our music ministry in both locations. Thank you guys so, so very, very much. We are now going to go to the word of God. There have been some technical difficulties this morning and our tech folks are working to try and clear that up. We're having some issues with internet service on this end. So y'all just bear with us through it as we try to work it all out. But there is a word from the Lord. There is a word from the Lord. And you can find it in the book of Philippians. There's a word from the Lord. You can find it in the book of Philippians. A moment of encouragement. I think that's what we need in this season. A moment of encouragement. Philippians 4 and 4 renders it this way. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, Whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. If you don't mind, let me read it again from the New Living Translation. Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all that you do. Remember, the Lord is coming. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Oh, somebody ought to hear that. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he's done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and your minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And now, my dear brothers and sisters, one final thing, fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Amen. I want to just from those few verses, let me see if we can make this live in those few verses. I want to tell the devil I can't give my joy back. I can't give my joy back. I wish I had two or three praises in the house that would say I can't give it back. I can't, I can't give it back. Amen. There is, there is this distinct difference between a thermometer and a thermostat. A thermostat is an isolated instrument with this volatile chemical on the inside of it called mercury. This mercury inside of the thermostat makes the therm the thermometer they make the, the mercury inside of the thermo of the thermometer makes the thermometer susceptible to outside elements. The thermometer. Now I want to show you the difference between thermostat and thermometer. If you take a thermometer and if you place it in cold temperature, then the thermometer will adjust to the temperature that's in the room. If you take a thermometer and put it in hot temperature because 
the thermometer is an isolated instrument. The thermometer will, will adjust. It takes on the attitude and the condition of things that are around it. A thermometer adjusts. A thermometer fixes on uh, the conditions in which it is placed. It does not dictate anything uh, that's going on around it, but rather it is simply susceptible to the environment and the conditions in which it is placed. On the other hand, a thermostat, this small box on the wall is quite different than a thermometer. A thermometer is an isolated instrument, but a thermostat is, uh, you can't see it, but it's connected to wires and conduits that are behind the wall. The thermostat is connected to something bigger than itself, and uh, it is not susceptible to the environment, but rather when you put a thermostat in a room, it demands that the room adjust to whatever temperature it sets. The thermometer uh, adjusts to the room, but the thermostat adjusts the room. Y'all didn't get it. The thermometer and it, it sets uh, the, therm the thermometer will sit in a room and it will uh, adjust to whatever is going on around it but a thermostat it demands a thermostat if you set it on a, a cold temperature and the room is hot it'll cool the room down if you set it on a hot temperature and the room is cool the thermostat will cause the room temperature to adjust it, I, I, I suggest this morning that what's wrong with the body of Christ is we got too many thermometers and we really need some thermostats. We need some folk who when you walk in the room, you don't just adjust to what's going on around you. If everybody around you has issues and problems and, and all kinds of concerns, when you walk in the room, you should be a thermostat that adjusts the temperature and what's going on in the room. I suggest tonight that the only way that people can be a thermostat instead of of a thermometer you've got to have something on the inside or be connected to something that's bigger than you are it is joy that's what I came to tell you I suggest that the only way people can go from being a thermometer to a thermostat is you've got to have some joy on the inside joy 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 for the believer is a major is an absolute Absolutely a major feat. It is joy that allows us to walk with Christ in time of crisis. Can I say that again? It is joy that causes us to walk with Christ in times of crisis. Joy is what Nehemiah says is our strength. Can I get three people to say joy, 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 joy? Joy, joy, it is joy that, that of the Lord that it, it empowers us to keep and keeps us and enables us to do what we have to do and what we've been called to do. Joy does not mean that you won't have bad days. Joy don't mean you won't have some difficult moments. Joy doesn't mean that things won't show up in your life. Joy does not mean that you won't have to deal with contradictory and oppositional and adversarial serial folks. Joy does not mean that you're not going to have uh, some internal issues, but I came to tell you what joy does mean is my internal thermostat is already set on the fact that things are going to be alright with me. Even though the outside doesn't look like it, I came to tell you I got my thermostat set on joy, and this joy that we're talking about is absolutely major. Any effort uh, this morning, I just want to drop three things on you. Any effort uh, to have this joy uh, without uh, having God as the center or having God without the joy is doomed for failure, especially in life when things get crazy. We, 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 see, we see it. We see it all the time. Uh, we see it when we deal with joy. The quality of life is tied to our joy. 
way. Let me talk about it from this angle. When we have a, a mother who is a, about to have a, a child, she's been waiting nine months. Some nights uh, she don't sleep well. Some nights uh, her feet are swollen. Some nights uh, she's in pain. She can't lay on her left side. She can't lay on her right side. Some nights, some nights, y'all, uh, it's too hot for her. And some nights uh, it's too cold for her. Sometimes uh, she's eating pickles and ice cream. Sometimes uh, you can never satisfy. But 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 that, that's the pain and the anguish that she goes through while she is in her crisis. But nine months later, the joy that the baby brings negates all of the priors and the problems that the pregnancy has provided. All I'm trying to tell you is that because of the joy of the child, now all of the pain has been negated. Can I suggest today that, 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 that the same thing holds true for the believer. Joy is what enables us to get through tough and rough times. So the question in this morning, preacher, you talking about joy, but the question is this morning, how do I get this joy? How do I get it? How do I get it? I, how do I get it? I contend, first of all, let me just throw this in. This ain't part of my message, but let me just throw this in for free. If you're going to get joy, joy is going to come by living for God. Joy is going to come. I, I know you thought I was going to say uh, if I threw some oil on you or threw a seed on the altar or, or, or if I ran around five times, uh, I was you going to get joy. No, 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 no. You're going to get joy by being obedient and following after God. That, that, it is here then this morning that it is the confidence and the reassuring that when I trust God, he's going to take care and handle all of my stuff. Without, without that, all attempts of joy will be fickle, futile, and it will be fake at its best. So the, 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 the real joy comes from a relationship with Jesus the Christ. That's the whole premise of my message this morning and that the whole text of today is about Paul writing to the church in Philippi. The church in Philippi is going through a difficult time. They are one of the poorest churches but yet Paul is writing to them to say what you have is not going to make you happy. I need the Philippi. I need you to retain your joy. This is interesting because the fact that they're one of the smaller gatherings, they got problems, they've been persecuted, they have a polytheistic religion around them. They, they, they are doing what they are called to do, but all hell has broken loose. So Paul says, I need you to hold on to your joy. And while you're sitting in your house, can you tell the person next to you in your room or sitting in your bedroom, sitting in your living room, sitting at the kitchen table, on the job, wherever you are, tell the person around you, I need you to hold on to your joy. I don't need you to give up on your calling. It is here that Paul says uh, to them, and he says to us this morning, uh, Paul says, uh, the joy that I'm talking about is going to help you properly respect your relationships. What do you, what do you mean? He, uh, Paul says, uh, the joy I'm talking about is going to help you with people. It's going to help you with people. In other words, uh, when you got joy on the inside, I can love other people. Mm -hmm. I, I, I said it too fast. Let me slow down. Let me say it again. I said that too fast. When, when, when you got joy on the inside, I can love other people regardless of how they treat me. Mm, yeah, get this, get this, get this. I, I need to say it one more time for the folk that's sitting in the back. Uh, I, I, yeah, I need to say that. Yeah, they say it one more time for the folks sitting in the corner. I need to say it one more time for the folk that, that don't want to hear this. Uh, the, the, this joy that I'm talking about will cause you to love folk 
regardless of how they treat you. Here, I think you can tweet this if you don't get nothing else today. Interaction with people will really reveal your inward posture. Interaction with people will reveal your inner posture. Interaction with people will reveal your inner posture. You, you see, you see, Elder, you see, Elder, you, you see, it when, when we run into people, we usually think that, 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 that it is them that made us respond like we responded. Mm -hmm. Lean in, I got it for you. When we run into difficult folk, we want to put it on them. It is them that caused me to respond. But the truth is that the relationship that you had with a difficult person reveals who you are. Who you are, God? You know. Now let me see if I can make it live here, because because y'all don't want to, y'all don't want to hear this. You want to blame your people. You want to blame the folk you don't like. You want to blame the people that are that, that are difficult in your life. But but the truth of the matter is uh, that 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 what's happening when you meet difficult people reveals who you are. Not not it ain't it ain't about the person that would that that, that calls us the trouble. It, it reveals what's on the inside of us. Verse 5 says, let everyone see that you are considerate in all that you do. He is saying, make sure that when you have to deal with folk that you got your inside right because, because what's inside of you becomes contagious uh, uh, to the people. Oh, you can be one that, that consider yourself to be this, this huge spiritual being, but if you don't fix your inside, you can you can be a cankering sore to somebody else. Oh Lord, Lord, let me just stop and deal with that a minute because there are some people that got a combination to your crazy. Yes, uh, there are some folks that got to come. They know how to push the button on your life. But the issue is it really ain't them. It's you because if you fix you, you, you ain't got to take my word for it. Jesus said, it. Be, he said, the greatest commandment is that you love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, and all your, and all your soul, and all your strength. And, he, and the second commandment was like that, that, that you love your neighbor as yourself. How? How I treat folk is not an indication for them. It, it really reveals who I am. Because so, so if I don't know how to treat folk that don't like me or people who I don't particularly like myself, then the problem ain't them. The problem is me. Oh, thank you, lights. Uh, this is gonna be a hard sermon today. Thank you, light. Uh, I, I call them. I call them sandpaper people. Uh, sandpaper people, you know, they rough around the edges. They rough on the outside. They'll rub you the wrong way. And it seems that they are almost sent and designed to get a reaction out of you. But, but, but what, if, what if God was sending the sandpaper people into your life because you got some rough edges and they are sent just to rub off some of your rough edges and get you right. Oh, well, lean in. I got, I got a few. I got about 10 in the room. I preach to y'all. This is a good 10 here. Uh, uh, what, what, what if God sending the people you don't like to get you right? Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you, speaker. Appreciate it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, a, a little abrasive sandpaper to, to rub you wrong, uh, an abrasive for a reason. Maybe God is sending people your way, not because they need help, but so He can shape you in your edges. Oh, maybe the sand people, paper people are coming our way because uh, we need to be smoothed out, so so we won't be so jacked up. In some places in our life, when, when I got joy, I can treat people right. I can treat people right. Here, here it is. Here it is. Joyless, angry people cannot be made glad. Mm -hmm. Joyless, angry people cannot be made glad. They, they wake up mad. They go to bed, man. They they already got some things on the inside. They 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 breathe in borrowed oxygen and still can't give God the glory. They got an attitude about everything. When you don't have joy, you see the problem with everything. When you got you got joy, you see the problem with everything is not them. The problem is that Paul says uh, you got to keep your joy because it helps you love people. Uh, can I just can I just I want to sit down right there. Just 
just for another minute because I didn't come to preach just to make you happy today. I came today to, to sharpen, to, to smooth out some of your sharp edges. I want to Oh, I want to. I want you to know you can't get by without loving people. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You can't get by. Oh, you can't get by. You can't. I'm, I'm going. I'm going to hang it right there. I'm going to hang it right there. The mother said, "Y'all at the house? I need y'all to holler at the TV or something because these folk in here ain't saying nothing." I, I, I want you. I want you. I want you to know you can't get by. He is talking about the the the. Fact that that in King James he says uh, that the, for the Lord is at hand. You got you're not gonna get away with this. The Lord is at hand. He's coming back, and in the essence, and you, you got to deal with people correctly because uh, I am minus my joy, and when I don't know how to treat everybody right. Oh. Oh, okay, okay. Joy, joy then, joy then. I'm going to get off that one, y'all. Joy makes you treat folk right. Joy, okay, joy then, joy then. First of all, what joy will do is uh, it will make you properly respect the relationships in your life. Here, here's point number two, and my time is up. Joy also helps me properly respond to resistance. So, um, so, so, so joy going to help me with people, but joy is also going to help me with my problems. Mm -hmm. Joy is not only going to help me love people, but it's going to help me with problems. Uh, joy, joy on the inside gives me the ability to push through the tough spots on the outside. Joy on the inside helps me to respond to resistance. How, how do we do it? Paul said, you see weakness Paul said, said look at this weakness but you refuse to carry the weight. Weakness weakness. Uh, don't, don't worry about anything. Paul says uh, there is a weight that's trying to sit down on you but he said don't worry about it. Pray about it. Mm -hmm. You got to stop weakness. Weakness is that thing that you're dealing with, that you're holding on to. The weight that comes with dealing with problems is called worry. Worry. You know worry. Worry. You know that boy named worry. Worry is that thing that's on your shoulder. Worry is like pain. Wor worry is that thing that, that has you worried about. Worry sits on you for stuff that ain't even happened. You know, wor worry. Let me see if I can put it there. Worry is like paying rent on a house that you don't even live in. Uh, what worry, worry says uh, that you are hanging on or you, you, you're dealing with stuff that ain't. What worry, worry has you worried about problems that ain't even showed up. Do y'all know that 90% of the things we worry about never even happen? We holding on and worried about stuff that never even, Paul says here, Paul says here, worry should not, I, I, it should not have uh, the possibility of holding us captive. But when I got joy, yeah, let me just go on and close right here. When I got joy, I got options. Mm -hmm. What do you mean, preacher? Uh, worry, worry, don't, 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 don't have uh, the, the control on my life when I have joy, when I have worry, when I have worry. I, I, it empties my today of its strength and it drains me of my tomorrow. Paul says, uh, don't worry. Paul says, take the things uh, that you're worrying about and put them in the right hands. Yeah, yeah let, me, let me put it in my, my hood vernacular. Paul says, this is what Paul Paul said, Paul said, take it to him up there. Uh, him upstairs. Get it to him upstairs. That's what Paul says. Give it to him upstairs because uh, he's able. When I give it to him, uh, I show him that I trust him. When I give it to him, I show that he has the power to fix it. I'm not, well, while, while I'm waiting on him to fix it, get this. Uh, get this. If you take it out of your hands, Lord, I feel my help coming now. When you take it out of your hands, uh, you put it in his hands. Take this out. When it's not in your hands and is in his hands now that your hands are empty Lord help me here now that you have removed the worry of how in your hands now you got hands that can praise y'all ain't got it I said now Lord help me uh, that your hands are empty now you have hands that can be lifted up and praise I gotta go but I want to suggest to some folk today that 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 that, that when I 
I look at what's going on in my life, I just, I look at what Paul said. Paul said, you need to turn around. Not only do you need to give it to him, but you need to look back over your life and, and, and see and see and see and see and see and see what God has already brought me out of. Paul says, Paul says, you worrying instead of giving him the glory. Well, I want to suggest to somebody today that uh, don't worry, Lord, help me. Don't worry about it. Put it in the hand of the Lord. Uh, I might have some issues today, uh, but every time I turn around and I look behind me, I say, well, since I got an issue today, uh, I remember the last time I had an issue, uh, God brought me out of it. And so I got a problem in my midst right now. Oh, I feel God right there. I got a problem that I'm trying to overcome. Uh, and last month, I had a problem. Last year, I had a problem. Uh, uh, two years ago I had a problem and the Lord made a way so if he did it before surely he got the power to do it all over again can I close my little argument on joy this morning so first of all respect relationships means people respond to resistance uh, uh, that means problems uh, but then finally you need to renew your rest that means peace somebody came to this service this morning uh, you got up out of your bed with tears in your eyes you got fatigue in your heart and you're trying to say Lord I don't understand why because you stayed up all night long trying to fix what you don't have the power to fix you are tired and you are fatigued your mind is in overload because you don't have your joy joy leads to peace joy leads to peace I'm talking about a peace that you cannot explain it can only be experienced if I had words to tell you I couldn't explain it if I had words in my vocabulary to explain it it wouldn't come out right because when I try to tell you what the Lord has done he's so amazing that I cannot explain it and but I came to close on this little argument uh, the Bible says that joy leads to peace uh, that peace that that crazy peace you came by it you ain't got enough education to have it you ain't got enough mind to handle it you ain't got enough stuff to have it oh but if you're gonna have it you gotta find your peace this piece is downloaded by Wi-Fi from glory. This piece comes directly from God. God says that if you're going to have any peace, you're going to have to be able to let me use you to describe it. Use me, Lord, so that I can tell some people what peace and joy looks like. Since you can't properly express it, I'm going to put it in you. And then I'm going to leave you on the guy on the sidelines and on the front lines of life so people can see my joy and people can see my peace. What are you talking about, God? He says that when your people see you, after all they know you've been through, they're going to be trying to figure out why you ain't crazy. You came to the funeral. God, I feel like preaching in here now. And you should have been broken hearted. You should have lost your mind. But you came to the funeral. And you had a smile on your face. And you had your hands lifted up. Somebody in the room holler peace. You sitting in the funeral, your mama is gone, your father is gone, husband or child is gone, and all you can do is say, look at what the Lord has already done. 
Is there anybody that will lift up your voice and say, I am on display because I should have lost my mind. I got my hands lifted up and people trying to figure out uh, how in the world uh, do you get that kind of smile? And you have to tell them I got something on the inside that's working on the outside and I can't do nothing but open up my mouth can I preach one more minute verse number 7 says peace that passive all understanding that will guard and keep you peace that's going to guard me if you're a military man like me you'll understand that a guard is this sentry on the outside and it blocks anything that's supposed to get inside a guard stands at the door and if the wrong person shows up the guard will say halt who goes there Lord I feel my help coming on if you show up at the guard's door he'll stand there and say halt who goes there so when he said I'm going to give you peace that guards against stuff he means that when depression shows up peace stands at the door and say halt who goes there depression say it's depression I came to get Shelton's mind but peace says you can't get in here because I gave him a joy that's blocking you from coming in anxiety you can't come in trials and trouble you can't come in you can mess around on the outside but you can't get on the inside can I go a little bit higher somebody ought to holler at your devil and say devil you can't get in here because I got too much joy is there anybody in the house that'll lift up your voice and open up your mouth and declare like grandmama this joy that I have the world didn't give it to me and the world can't take it away come on shout with your boy I got joy I got joy unspeakable joy you can't steal it devil you can't have it I'm going to hold on to it when the trouble shows up. I'm going to keep on lifting my hand. I'm going to keep opening my mouth. I'm going to keep giving him the praise. Is there anybody? I wish I heard somebody to open up your mouth and say joy. Say joy. Say joy. Say joy. Say joy. Yeah. I got joy. I got joy. I'm finished. I'm finished. I'm finished. I'm finished, y'all. Oh, but I feel him in the room. I'm trying to figure out. I'm trying to. I called Paul last night and I said, Paul, how did you get joy? Because you are the same, Paul that was shipwrecked three times. Paul, how do you have joy? They tried to stone you to death. Paul, how do you have joy? They cast you on the outskirts, put you out on an island. How do you have joy? With all the hell you've been through, Paul says, shall tell the people, that the reason I got joy is because of my trouble. I seen what the Lord can do. I saw him deliver me. I saw him heal me. I saw him bring me through. I saw him take care of me. I saw him pick me up. I saw him cover me. Is there anybody? Can somebody? How about everybody? Shout joy! Oh, 
Paul said, I got, I got joy. I got joy, Brian. And it don't come, it don't come from people. Then we're finished. I got joy. I got joy. I got, it didn't come from people. This that I got don't come from money. This that I got don't even come from what kind of stuff I have, cars, houses, clothes that we wear. No. This joy is an internal thing that makes me happy even when I should be sad. Mika, I got, I got a different kind of joy. I got, I got the kind of joy that makes it confusing for folk watching me. Because they know my story. And they know we shouldn't be this happy. This is the kind of joy that's confusing. From, let, let, me, let me, I try to help young preachers. Young preachers, this kind of joy will confuse you if you don't really have it. Because you'll need a room full of folk in order to give you joy. But me, no, no, no. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm preaching with joy because it has nothing to do with... See, the people weren't there when I was in a drug house. The people weren't there when I was high and strung out. The people weren't there when I had when I had a baby out of wedlock. The people and the people of God looked them down their nose at me. The, the church wasn't there. The people weren't there when I was on alcohol, hanging in the street. This joy, this kind of joy here is the kind you got regardless of what you're dealing with. Yeah. Mika, this is that joy where they wrote us off. This is that joy where they said we would never be nothing. This is that joy that only comes, Kaynetta, from God himself. I want you to grab that today. But you got to have it on the inside. Oh, not predicated on the outside. Stop being a thermometer and be a thermostat. Oh, you ain't got to help me preach. I'll preach by myself. I'll say amen alone. How many of y'all used to being alone? You, you alone in your mind anyway. I'm used to being by myself. So I don't need people when it comes to declaring that God has been good. Paul says, Paul says, count count it all joy yeah count it all joy y'all got it I've learned here it is I've learned to be content in whatever state I'm in I've learned to be content, whether I'm a base or bound, rich or poor, up or down, I've learned to be content whatever state I'm in. So some days it don't go good. Let me tell you what my joy does. Just because you having a crazy day don't mean that my day going to be crazy. Because I'm going to use the thermostat to adjust to what's going on around me. That's what I came to tell you. People, problems, y'all with me? Praise. You got to have joy will take you through all of that. That's what Paul is telling us devil can't have my joy the devil can't have my joy amen I want to open the doors of the church shout out to the Brown family five of them that four of them that joined 
us on last Sunday, joined uh, last week, joined church on last week. Cyber. Yeah, join the church, Cyber. Amen. Brown family. God bless you all. There may be others this week that want to say yes to God. If that's you, if that's you, send me an inbox or you can go to the website www.greaterjoynbc.org Go to the website. There is a tab there that says you can join or membership joining. Also has a prayer request tab on the website now. So make sure you go there. I want to appeal to you that your problem is not too big for God to resolve it. So whoever you are, we calling you out from among them to have this joy that we have. So come on, inbox me or go to the website. compass for my way you're the fire and light when nights are long and cold in sadness you are the laughter that shadows all my fears when I'm all alone your hand is there to hold oh, oh, oh. Jesus you're the center of my joy all is good and perfect comes from You're the heart of my contentment, hold oh, for all I do. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for how it has permeated us. Thank you, Lord. That you have shown us that chaos does not dictate our lives. Thank you that even on tomorrow if I've got to walk in chaos. It doesn't affect what I feel on the inside. If it's at work. If it's on the job. If it's at home. If it's in the street. Chaos will not dictate who I am with you so God I love you today for your joy definitely is leading my life so God everything that's connected to me I declare, declare and decree that joy is going to be a part of their walk on tomorrow everyone listening to me over the waves in the room those that may look at this later I declare right now joy is the center of your life so God I ask right now that you would just keep us in your care devil you are a liar I plead the blood of Jesus over every situation that's not like you in Jesus name amen Jesus.